Our next speaker is Professor Sosnik, Alejandro Sosnik, who is interestingly, and for some mysterious way, he got the same PhD and I did in applied chemistry. <laughs> Not in the same place, I guess. Not at the same place, okay. most probably, but it's the same degree. So, uh, and he traveled all over the place, all over the world, starting in... Uh, half the world. Half, yeah. At least half of yeah. the world. Well, the North Pole and South Pole is still available, so... Please go ahead without wasting any time. This is to, to move forward? Okay. So, thanks for the introduction. Uh, I am building a new research group at the Technion, the Department of Material Science and Engineering. I moved back to Israel one year and a half ago. Uh, uh, time is going fast. Uh, so part of the, the, the results that I will present today were uh, studies that we conducted in Argentina uh, while I was faculty there. We are working in, in different avenues from uh, drug crystallization and bottom-up technologies to produce uh, drug nanocrystals to polymer synthesis and polymeric nanoparticles, micelles, that is the topic that I will address today. Um, so here you have a list of quite updated uh, clinical trials uh, in terms of polymeric micelles. Uh, all of them are for the therapy of cancer by parental roots. Uh, some of them are in advanced clinical trials, some have been already implemented in clinics, especially uh, for the therapy of gast gastric cancer. And down there you have uh, two quite recent reviews where they stress the potential of polymeric micelles uh, in oral therapy, one of them by Jean-Christophe Lerouge, who is uh, attending the conference. Um, and during the last eight or nine years, we were working around the application of polymeric micelles for non-parental roots, and this is uh, the topic that I will address today. We were work, working a lot on PO, PPO block of polymers, linear and branched, and the reason that we were using them is that we wanted to address specific, specific clinical concerns, uh, especially in poverty-related diseases and pediatrics, and in this sense, uh, trying to simplify uh, the development and using polymers that are approved for pharmaceutical uses is uh, much more advantageous. We played a lot with the chemistry, the architecture, the changes in the, in the, in the uh, micellar core, and change the self-assembly and the encapsulation capacity of different polymers, and developed a first uh, aqueous liquid formulation for the administration of uh, efavirenz, a first-line antiretroviral used in the treatment of uh, HIV in, in children. Um, we uh, improved the or by availability of this drug by 50 to uh, 70 percent. And based on uh, this data and the fact that one of the formulations that we developed uh, was made of all FDA approved pharmaceuticals, we were allowed for a first very preliminary clinical assessment and we compared this formulation with a capsule in one other health volunteer and submitted a new protocol to the Argentine regulatory agency that was approved several years ago, and we are expecting to, to conduct uh, a new assessment or clinical assessment uh, in brief. We also play around with other uh, polymeric micelles, flower-like, for example, to encapsulate more challenging drugs. In this case, uh, we were working with rifampicin. Rifampicin is a first-line drug for the treatment of tuberculosis. Uh, it's poorly water-soluble. Uh, very amphiphilic and amphoteric. It uh, self-assembles by itself, but last uh, and last and not least, um, rifampicin degrades in the stomach very fast, so the, uh, the oral bioavailability is compromised, especially when it's uh, co-administered uh, according to all the clinical guidelines with the water-soluble isoniazid. So polymeric mices are claimed to be uh, good protectants of the encapsulated drug. We wanted to, to challenge uh, the polymeric mices that we were working with, and in this sense, we encapsulated quite successfully rifampicin and demonstrated that even in the presence of soluble isoniazid, we can increase the oral bioavailability of rifampicin by two to three times, and we have basically a platform that, that if we develop more, we could uh, get to the point of the first uh, pediatric fixed dose combination for the co-administration of the most potent anti-tuberculosis drugs. 
Okay, polymeric mices are, are very versatile and we have tested these with different drugs, but they still present at least three main drawbacks. Uh, the most claimed drawback is obvious. Uh, they undergo disintegration or dis disassembly when we dilute them to uh, final concentrations that are below the critical micellar con concentration. And this is uh, true for many polymeric micelles, but depends on the polymer and, and the drug that is uh, encapsulated. For non parental administration routes, and more specifically mucosal delivery, uh, the interaction of the most popular polymeric micelles with a mucosa is weak or inexistent. Uh, so we are interested in increasing this interaction. And one main general problem of polymeric micelles is that they release the drug quite fast. They do not control the release. So we are trying to address uh, these issues with different approaches. Uh, today I will talk about one of them. Uh, in this sense, what we are doing is trying to use a pharmaceut pharmaceutically accepted polymers to build new molecules that enable the uh, generation of polymeric micelles that are at the same time mucoadhesive and that can be somehow stabilized physically or chemically to sustain the release and uh, withstand dilution. So what we are doing in, in this project is um, we are taking different multifunctional hydrophilic backbones that are inherently mucoadhesive. We are using polymers that are very well known, such as kyrosan, alginate, PVA, polyvinyl alcohol. We are hydrophobizing the side change using different chemistries. And by doing so, we get uh, self-assembly molecules that can be at the very uh, low concentrations that we use, unimolecular micelles, so they are inherently stable to dilution. They maintain mucoadhesive properties due to the hydrophilic mucoadhesive backbone. And finally, uh, display additional functional groups that could be used to uh, conjugate uh, additional uh, ligands, for, for example, active targeting. So this is one of the examples that we were uh, investigating during the last times. The chemistry uh, seems simple, but sometimes you need to overcome some issues. For example, the, the low solubility of the, of the hydrophilic backbone. We are using chitosan, as I mentioned before, so these are the, 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 the examples that I will present today. Uh, in this case, we took uh, chitosan and we polymerized or grafted uh, short polycaprolactone uh, side chains using uh, methansulfonic acid as medium uh, catalyst and protectant of the amine groups. We want to preserve as much as we can the amine groups that are involved in mucoadhesion and also in the opening of the tight junctions uh, in epithelia. Uh, this synthesis is uh, uh, done with microwave radiation so we can get these copolymers within uh, seven to ten minutes uh, in relatively high yields. Um, these Copolymer self-assembly generating spherical polymeric micelles. Uh, we tested different uh, concentrations and, and, and different properties. Uh, the size is between 100 and 150 nanometers, so they fit very well. Uh, the sizes that we want for mucosal administration, and in this sense, we can also play with the molecular weights of, of the different components and, and change uh, these properties. The CMC is very low. And we preserve the amine groups that are involved in, in mucoadhesion. We tested uh, the cytocompatibility in different cell lines, uh, some of them uh, thinking about the inhalatory administration of anti tuberculosis drug to address the, uh, the main reservoir of the mycobacterium tuberculosis, alveolar macrophages, and also to test uptake by phagocytic cells. Now we are pursuing uh, tests with macrophages. We are also using NIPAM to hydrophobize uh, kyrosan and other hydrophilic backbones. The idea of using uh, NIPAM is not because it's uh, really approved for pharmaceutical use, but just to turn off and on uh, the micellization and test uh, additional modifications. Uh, in this case, we are using different chemistries from thermal reactions, microwave assisted th synthesis, and also gamma radiation in collaboration with colleagues in, in Mexico. We are synthesizing different derivatives. Uh, 
as you can see, the copolymers undergo self-assembly when we heat them up above this LCST, the lower critical solution uh, temperature of uh, NIPAM or polynipam that is around 32, 34 degrees. And the next stage was to stabilize these micelles, uh, because otherwise we cannot maintain them uh, assembled if we cool the system down to room temperature. In this case, the micelles are a bit larger, between 150 uh, to 400 nanometers, but still, we can play with uh, the different components and get, get different sizes. So to stabilize the, the polymeric micelles, uh, we thought about different strategies. The, these are the, probably the most popular. There are uh, more. One of them is the generation of unimolecular micelles, but you could uh, cross-link, covalently cross-link the corona or the core uh, with pros and cons in each uh, strategy. The main problem of the corona cross-linking is that if you encapsulated the drug prior to the cross-linking, you could affect the integrity of the drug, and this is something that you don't want to do if you cannot control the process, especially when you think about uh, drug release. Um, so to, what we are doing now is working on, on non-covalent cross-linking. In the case of Kairosan, it's uh, very straightforward to use the technology or the technique uh, developed by Maria Jose Alonso, TPP. Uh, so this is a proof of concept. We have the micelles that are uh, generated at 37 degrees. This is a nanoparticle tracking uh, analysis uh, where you see the reflection of the laser on, on the micelles. This sample is very concentrated, so you cannot um, quantify the particles. You need to dilute to, to, to quantify them, but still you can visualize them. When we cool the system down to room temperature, the micelles disassemble very fast, as you can see in the lower video that is supposed to move to. And then when we uh, fine-tune the cross-linking, and this is something that we, we are still working on, uh, you can see the polymeric mices at room temperature that remain assembled even if the NIPAM uh, became hydrophilic. We are characterizing the nanostructure of the polymeric micelles. Uh, on the upper left side, we have the non cross link micelles. We didn't succeed until now to, to get uh, the morphology of the micelles. We are working with Cryotem in collaboration with Ganit Danino in Technion. And uh, the lower pictures are images of the cross-linked polymeric micelles, they seem to be generated by smaller unimolecular aggregates that we are trying to reveal or elucidate with uh, complementary analysis by DLS and NanoSide 2. Um, we are also developing, uh, using NTA to develop muco-adhesive uh, or muco-adhesiveness uh, test in vitro to characterize well the nanoparticles or the micelles. So you see on the left side the non cross link polymeric micelles, on the right the cross link polymeric micelles, and then in the center you have musing, and you can not only uh, measure the size increase by NTA, but also to quantify or reveal the decrease in the number of particles per volume, and this is another quantitative measure of uh, mucoaddition that we are now uh, translating, translating to ex vivo experiments. We are also conducting uh, cytocompatibility studies with CACO2 cell monolayers, and we are beginning with penetration studies to uh, verify how these polymeric micelles, prior to the cross-linking and after the cross-linking, can uh, go across uh, epithelia. And we are also working uh, very intensively in the encapsulation of different anti antiretrovirals. We are now uh, focused on protease inhibitors. This is an example of indinavir, a drug that is not used anymore, that is uh, used only in second line uh, uh, protocols in very poor countries where they cannot get better drugs. But now you have darunavir and always in combination with ritonavir and other antiretrovirals. These drugs are very water-insoluble or poorly water-soluble, so we are exploring the capacity of different polymerizers to encapsulate them, and these are very preliminary res results where we uh, compare the capacity of these polymeric micelles to encapsulate, in this case, in Dinavir with uh, Kytosan polynipam polymeric micelles, and the second appeared to be much more advantageous. Still, the numbers are very modest, and we are working on changing the chemistry of the hydrophobic polymer 
or the hydrophobic side chain to increase the encapsulation capacity. And we are working also with other drugs. Uh, I will not summarize because this work is still ongoing uh, and we are opening different sub avenues of, of this project. We are investigating, as I mentioned before, new hydrophobic blocks and more complex compositions and, and architectures and combinations of hydrophobic blocks. We are considering the, uh, the use of advanced setups for cross-linking. This is a very crucial stage, so we are considering the use of microfluidics. Um, we are uh, extending the mu addition studies to ex vivo. We are ex investigating drug encapsulation and release, and finally we are pursuing in vivo studies also in collaboration. Let me thank my small and young group uh, at the Technion, the funding, my collaborators in Israel and abroad also beginning some collaborations in industry, and thanks very much for your attention. <laughs>